and welcome to Ask Paul. Let's see what someone's going to ask me. I kind of peeked at this one in the first place, and it's going to be a toughie. So Frank in Connecticut wants to ex have me explain the differences between various DAC topologies, chips, FPGAs, R2R, discretes, etc. And he's confused since some articles indicate that an FPGA is a filtering mechanism, but others say that it's a DAC. So what's the deal behind it? Well, first off, let's let's start with the be the end of your question concerning FPGAs. An FPGA is what we use, as you probably know, in DirectStream uh, and DirectStream Junior. And it is an FPGA, which stands for Field Programmable Gate Array. And think of that in the same light that you might think of perhaps a microprocessor, but or a DAC. It is a device with, in our case, a couple of million switches, gates, they're called, that can be configured in any way that you want, okay? So um, how, and that's the programmable part of this FPGA. So if we took an FPGA and we wanted it to be a filter, we could put in a set of code, an algorithm, and it would then perform a filter function. Or if we'd like it to become a Intel processor, we could configure it to become that. The difference is, if you took an actual Intel processor, the kind that might be running your computer or an ARM processor that might be running the phone that you uh, talk on, those are fixed architecture. In other words, those switches, those same gates inside, are all assigned specific duties. You are a memory section. You're a processing unit. You are a bus or a switch. And, and those gates and switches can only do those things. In an FPGA, you can actually program. They, they, they are just, uh, just think of a, a group of a million people that we're going to try and get something done. Well, in an FPGA, I can grab this 100,000 people and say that you guys are over here digging this, and this 100,000 people, you guys are over here uh, calculating that, and then when the job is done, I'm going to set you all back up, and we'll rearrange it, and you'll do something else. Okay? So that's how we make a field programmable DAC. And in our DAC, and this is the work that uh, Ted Smith our digital guru has spent a good decade designing. That FPGA is in fact a DAC, and within that DAC are multiple digital filters and switches and gates and everything that makes a DAC work. And he programs it to be that. And that's why when we do an update on our DACs, which we do for free for people, every six months or so, everybody that owns a direct stream or a DirectStream Junior actually gets a new DAC. And it sounds different, it performs different, because as we make improvements, we just give those away. People program it with a little SD card in the back, takes about 30 seconds, and you have a new DAC. And we do that for free. Try that with a fixed DAC, not gonna happen. So that's one of the reasons that we use an FPGA. It gives us huge flexibility to build any kind of DAC filter that we want to dream up and we can keep up with technology in that way. A fixed DAC is something more like what I just described where you can buy a chip off the shelf from say ESS or Wolfson or any number of um, uh, analog devices. And any number of companies make dedicated silicone devices who, where these gates are permanently assigned. You do this, you do that. And that's a chip DAC. And they range anywhere from, you know, a dollar to hundreds of dollars, depending on what type of chip deck you're going to get. And the last one I'll cover real quick, and then I'm going to uh, talk about the sound quality, and, and I'll do that as brief as I can. The, the last part I want to mention is that there are 
older types of DACs that you had asked about, ladder DACs, R2R DACs, and those used to be the only kind of DACs around. They were on chips, many of them, and they used what's called a ladder network, which is a series of precision resistors turned on with precision switches. Each of these switches is basically a current source, but anyway, it, these uh, s these resistors are turned on, and there's usually 16 in a 16-bit DAC, that you turn on, and each resistor is is a, a, a double. So, you, you know, you get 1, 2, 4, 8, and and so on, up to the, the, the multiple of, of 16 bits, and that is making a higher or a lower signal that comes out. The problem with those is once we exceeded 16 bits, it became almost impossible to get to precision levels of 24 bits and 32 bits because the precision of the resistors could not be uh, manufactured. We basically couldn't make resistors that precise and exactly the, the, the multiples that we need of each resistor. So what they did is they changed over to a different kind of DAC than a ladder DAC called a, a Sigma Delta DAC, which is what most modern DACs use today. So I hope that kind of answered your question. And real briefly, the difference in sound quality of DACs is largely due to power supply and in particular the output stage. So if you take a chip DAC or an FPGA, either one, but let's just take a chip DAC. We buy an ESS chip and this company buys that same ESS chip, we buy that and we put it into our own DACs, but we have one way of doing an output analog stage and this company has another way of doing the output analog stage. They will sound entirely different even though the actual D to A converter, the digital to analog converter itself, are the same. So there's the big differences. That's, uh, in brief, those differences in DAX. And I hope, that, I hope that helped your understanding. Great question. And we probably should dig more into that as time goes on. But I thank you for asking it. And we'll talk later. Bye-bye.